I want to give you three time-saving tips for how to follow the design recipe. The first tip is to notice that it's really boring to have to test our code over and over again. Every time we change anything in our entire program, we have to test all the functions again. That's a lot of typing. So instead of testing things manually inside the interactions window, that's the bottom half of Dr. Racket, we could use some automatic testing. So most programming languages provide us ways to automate testing, and the beginning student language also provides us with automatic testing. So here's how you add some tests in the program so that every time you run the program, the test will be run automatically. We're going to put left paren and then check expect. One word, that means uh, we're going to check that the result of the function is um, uh, matching what we expect. And check expect takes two inputs. The first input is how we want to call the function. So that's basically what we type into the interactions window. I'm just going to copy it up. Okay. Um, and the second input to check expect is what we want the output to be. So here the output should be zero. So that's one test. Let's also do the two other tests that are currently visible in the interactions window. So if we do F2C212, the result should be 100. And just to copy the last thing out as well, if we do F2C99.5, the result should be 37.5. Okay, so now when I hit run again, I don't have to type anything anymore because these three tests will run automatically and I just get a summary that says all three tests pass. Okay. If the tests don't pass, then I'll get an error message and I can go debug the test, but this is convenient because now, from now on, anytime I change my program, I just have to hit the run button and all the tests will run automatically. Okay. So I highly recommend that you start using check expect to write these tests. And in fact, because check expect is so useful, when you write function examples, instead of writing a comment like this, given 32 expect zero, you could just write the test directly. Okay, so I'm gonna move that up. So I could have just written it like this, okay? And I could also have written tests instead of comments for my other two examples. So when you get to step three in the design recipe, instead of writing comments to describe your examples, you could write tests already. Okay, but of course you have to wait until step six to actually run those tests. Still, you could write check expect to save some time. So that's the first tip to use check expect to write your examples and automate the testing that way. The second tip I want to share is to notice that it is really important for you to follow the six steps of the design recipe one after the other in order. It's really important that you start with data definitions and end with testing. Okay. Now that doesn't mean that you don't necessarily need to go back up. Okay. So sometimes when you go to get to a step, you might discover some new information that prompts you to backtrack in the design process. We already saw this, right? Because when we tested our code, we found that our first definition did not work. And so we had to go back to step five to fix the definition and then test again. Okay. Another place where you might encounter this is when you write down a signature. You might find yourself using a word like temperature that you had not defined yet. Here we already defined it, but if you didn't already define what a temperature is, then step two will tell you to go back to step one to define what a temperature is. Okay. So backtracking is often what we do when we follow the design recipe, but still we have to follow the steps from top to bottom from one to six in order. Okay, so that's the second uh, tip. Uh, the third tip is to notice that different steps of the design recipe produce products that look very different. Okay, so step one produces data definitions, and the data definition always looks like this. It says A something is blah, 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 and that looks very different from a signature. Okay, a signature says that you have a function name, and then always a colon, and then some input, and then some arrow, and then some output. Okay, so that's what a signature looks like. So when I see something that looks like this, I know it's a signature and it's not a data definition. And then I know that the purpose is probably below that and this is a header and this is an example and so on. And so because the products of each step are so different, you don't really have to put the names of the steps 
when you follow the design recipe. You don't have to say step one data definitions because I see this line and I see, oh yeah, that's a data definition. You don't really have to put signature purpose header on, uh, 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 you have to put the actual signature and I look, when I look at it, I see, oh, that's a signature and that's a purpose and that's a header, okay? And similarly, you don't have to put the names of the steps three, four, five, six, okay? Now in the file, so that uh, I upload for this part of the class, I'm still going to uh, put the names of the steps in because we're introducing you to the D9 recipe, but you don't have to uh, put the steps in. You just have to recognize that this is a data definition, so it currently belongs to step one. You do need to learn to recognize what data definitions look like and what signatures look like. Okay, so that's the first tip.